Today I'm going to talk to you how to fight back against the JavaScript revolution and return to the soul that is just Bash programming. We're going to put Bash scripts on the web today. We're going to do this by using a revolutionary old technology called the CGI, the Common Gateway Interface. It's a way for web servers to talk to just random scripts that run in your system and then take that output and put them online. How cool is that? You know, no need to learn, no need to learn a front-end language and a back-end language, JavaScript. No need to learn any of that. Just just write in Bash, it's easy. We're gonna talk about this. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a revolutionary new technique that actually is new, that brings this into the modern world. And it's not JavaScript, so stay tuned. Anyway, so we're going to use the soulful web server called Apache today. Uh, so install that. I am on Fedora, so my command to install it is dnf install httpd. So the HTTP daemon, that's what it's called on Fedora, but on uh, Ubuntu or whatever, it's called Apache 2, like this. But you'd use apt, apt and like that, if you're on Ubuntu or whatever. On Arch, you can figure it out yourself. Now you've installed Apache, you need to start it. Systemctl start, HTTP or Apache 2. Now, make sure that's installed correctly by going to localhost here, look. HTTP colon slash slash localhost. I'm installing this on my computer, but if you're on a server, put your server's IP in there. Then you should see this web page here. It will look a bit different depending on what distribution you're using, but you can see I'm using Fedora and I've installed Apache. So that just shows that this worked. So now it's time to check that our default install of Apache also came with support for the CGI modules. So to do that, run this command. You're gonna grep, we're gonna grep for load module in etsy httpd in every file in here. And this will show all the modules we've got installed, but we want to specifically look for mod CGI. So we'll grep again. There's probably a more efficient way to do this, but what have you. And we can see here that I've got this here in 01cgi.conf. I've got mod CGI. If you've got that, that's good. So now we want to go to our web route. That is normally var www, but depending on your system, it may be different. And there should be two directories in here, CGI bin and HTML. Let's edit HTML and then we'll make a file in here called index.html and just put hi in here. Hello. So this is a header. And now if we refresh this page, this will actually change. There we go. So that is index.html, what we're looking at here, even though it doesn't say it. We could even put it in, but by default, uh, by default it is index.html. By default, you don't actually need to type anything. Just put localhost, there we go, right. Quit out of that. So I'm now in my CGI bin directory. Any file in here, Apache will think is a script and execute it and then return the results to us, which is what we want. So we can write a bash script. Let's go ahead and write a bash script. Script.sh. All right. So you need the shebang here, user bin bash. So wherever your bash is, you can find that by typing which bash and it will tell you the path. So that's what you need to put in, the exact path. And now you need a few things in here. So you need more than just a normal bash script, okay? Because it's, apologies, just on my keyboard. Because this displayed on the website, you need to tell it what type of content it is. So to do that, you need, you need this line, otherwise it will fail to work. You need content type text HTML. Then you could like return JSON if you wanted, but this basically says to the web server, display it as it is HTML. Then you also, I don't fully understand this, but you also need to echo a blank line. Otherwise it will error. It just will, I spent too long debugging this. And now let's just echo hello world. All right. So what should this script do? If we run it on, well, we need to make it executable. So add the X bit using chmod. That is correct. Script.sh. Now we should be able to run script.sh. Check, it echoes that and what we expect in hello world. Now we go to back to localhost on our web browser, cgi hyphen bin slash script dot sh. There you go, see it returns hello world. How cool is that? We are now running a bash script on the web. If your mind is not blown or if you don't see possibilities from this, I'm sorry. But when I discovered this, discovered this, it's been around longer than I've been alive. This is how people did dynamic websites before JavaScript, okay? This was like the, the OG of web development. But normally you'd write them in Perl scripts because that was the Python of its day. Anyway. So there's the command in Linux called who am I? This will tell you what user you're running as. Now I'm root, but Apache is not running as root. So just who am I? Who am I? So this should tell us who we are when we run it. 
script.sh, it runs as root. You can, we can even do this, look. Running as, test that again, running as root, right? And then if I refresh it here, running as Apache, look at that. Apache is the my web server user. So it's running as a different user, but I just thought I'd put that in there because it would be cool to show you. Now notice here that they're all on one line. Uh, this is because, uh, this is actually expecting HTML, okay? So, to solve this problem of it not being on a new line, we can actually wrap these in P tags. So P for a paragraph in HTML, like this, and then P, like this. So this now, there we are, they're running as P tags. I've shown you the page source, you see they're actually put in P tags here. Very cool. Um, and you know, we could even put in here, we could make this bold using the B tag. Now Apache is bold. Basic HTML, you're getting lots of value from this video, all right? Thumbs up, like, comment, share, subscribe. So this is well and cool, but this script isn't useful, it just tells you who the user is. That, let's do, I created a script that would be useful, all right? I called it monits.sh, it's a monitoring script, okay? And let me quickly go through what this does, okay? This script, again, it's HTML, and it uh, echoes a new line, and then we're gonna get the uptime, which using the uptime dash pretty to return the uptime. Then we're gonna get our memory, which I'm just uh, you doing it this way. So this, let me show you what this is doing. Um, so if I go free dash M, that gets our free memory. And then if I pipe that, then I'm using awk print two, three and seven to get the numbers two, three and seven. So of columns. So I'm getting this column two, column three, and column seven. So I want the total used and available. And I'm using said to only print the second line. So this is line two, this is line one, this is line two. So I'm just printing this. There we are. Um, and that's loads into the mem variable. And then load, I am uh, basically getting here. So if you look in proc load average, this gets your load average in the, the same way that the uptime command will also give you your load average, but this is a better way of doing it in a script. Uh, and then I am using awk to mark up that. So I'm basically 1515, um, 1515. I'm just using awk to mark it up using with bold tags. Um, so that's what's happening there. Uh, and then I'm just echoing it. So each one is a header. And then we get the uptime, and then we get the memory, and then we get the load average. All right, let me show you what that looks like. Monit.sh, here we go. Uptime, I've been up 39 minutes. Uh, yep, I do reboot my computer every night because I'm an electricity saving chad. Um. Total memory, we have 16 gigs of RAM, just under. We have 2.3 gigs, three, and we have 13, is that correct? Hmm. Maybe this is a bit wrong. This should say used, I would, I think. Yeah, that's used. <laughs> so that's not free, Mark, that's used. Let's quickly fix that, shall we? So used, uh, free, used. There we are, quickly fix that. There we go, live debugging. And notice when I refreshed, it actually changed the script. So when, every time I refresh, these script values are changing because I'm consuming more memory, All right? Quite cool, but not very, you know, it's quite annoying that you have to sit there and refresh it all the time, isn't it? This is the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm going to show you the way to make this auto refresh with no JavaScript and just make it mwah, fantastic. All right, watch and learn, gentlemen. Now we're going to use the tool HTMX, which basically is a, a way for your HTML to make calls um, to a backend and then return those values. So. If you were to do this in JavaScript, you'd say, okay, go to this script, get the value, but it has to be in a format that JavaScript understands. So go to the script. The script would, instead of returning HTML, it would have to return JSON. And then we'd have to get that JSON in the front end and then use JavaScript to put those JSON into proper HTML, all right? And that is terrible and scary and bad and not good. Whereas HTMX just allows you to easily do it. Now, HTMX is written in JavaScript. We'll ignore that for now because we don't actually have to touch JavaScript directly. All right. So you want this line here. This basically installs it, right? Uh, it installs it from a CDN. So I'm going to go back to my index.html file. Oh, sorry. You remember? And then put in the script here. So 
to install it. Easy peasy, we've installed it now. And now we can use HTMX to just swap out our uh, whatever. I'll just show you and then explain what it's doing. That'll be easier. But so we want a div, which is like a, a, a division of our page. And HTMX is going to swap the content of that division with the content of our script. All right. HX get. So HTMX get. Um, and we want to get uh, our script. So CGI hyphen bin slash monet dot sh. So get the content that that script returns um, or that page returns. And then we just want to swap the inner HTML. So everything inside this div we want to swap with that. And then we can also do a trigger. So hx trigger and let's put every one second. So every one second swap whatever's in this div, which at the moment is nothing with the content of this. Okay, let's just see if that works. All right. Refresh. Is it working? It is working. So this is just working every second. But notice the first time we go there, it doesn't populate. It has to wait a second, which you know, if you're a high up power user, that's like a bit, ugh. this is a bit weird. And we can fix this by just putting those headers in, right? It just swaps them anyway. They're not, we'll just put them in for now. So it's uptime. Then it's memory, and then it's load. So I'm going to put those in like this. I've already done my tags wrong. Load average. Right. So fix the tag mark. There we are. So now, there we go. It refreshed. And it looks, this looks a bit cleaner, doesn't it? Look how cool that is. So this now is getting from the, from here, it's this HTMX is going to we told it to, look, it's going to here, CGI bin slash monet dot sh. Um, monet dot sh, so it's going here, it's getting the HTML that this returns, not JSON, which you'd have to do in JavaScript. Every one second, it's going here and getting the value and then populating it here for us. And we can see this in our log files. So if we go to our log files, var log HTTP access, might be different for yours, but this is CentOS, Fedora, whatever. We can see that every second it is getting this script here, okay? Every second, HTMX is getting the result of this. Cool. And then we can even change it. So to show you, um, if I go here and if we change this script to Monit to our script before, which is just called script, what do you think is going to happen? Refresh the page. Bam. It swaps it out here, okay? Cool. Um, Let's put that back though, back to Monit. Refresh. Right, there we are. And to show you this actually working, I'm also gonna show you something else, boys. I'm gonna show you how to stress test your computer, all right? So we're gonna use the command stress hyphen ng for this. We're gonna basically make our memory spike so we can see this happening. I'll put this on the same screen for you. Um, here we are. So stress ng, remember this is still running. Um, we, we wanna use four CPUs and we wanna, two mega virtual memory like this I want to fork it eight so split eight times and then let's just time out for 20 10 seconds in case it breaks everything so you see what i've done there so this is basically stress test and we are expecting all these results to go up dispatching hogs it's ready to go whole hog so already our one minute load average is spiking our total available memory is dropping how high is this going to spike it spiked up to 299 and now it's dropping again. I didn't really affect the load average much, but once if I go uh, CPU 8, see how high we can get our load average up. 29, 336, yeah, there you go. 4.5, there you go. So this is now useful as sort of a, a very, very basic dashboard. But anyway, that's how you get your bash scripts on the web. There's obviously so much more you could do with this. I've shown you how to do a basic dashboard. Um, but you can also, you can, if you want to go further, you can pass user data using forms into your scripts so you can run them as arguments or what have you, or run your scripts with arguments, I should say, but it can get very cool and very advanced. Obviously, if you're getting too advanced, I would recommend you use a proper, don't use CGI anymore, but, but for very basic scripts, there's no reason to go out to use PHP or a super web server or JavaScript or, or Django or Node.js, God forbid. Yeah, it, it's great. Uh, HTMX is also great. I thought I'd throw that in there as a nice little treat for you because it is, it's my favorite piece of software 
released in the last five years easily. I hope you learned something today. Return to the ways of the common gateway interface. It has soul, and so do you.